In the next two episodes we're going to explore the two twin castles, Eisenberg and Hohenfreiberg. You may ask why they are called the twin castles. Let pictures answer this to you. Those two castles are basically located right next to each other. Standing at the watchtower of Eisenberg, you can easily see Castle Hohenfreiberg with bare eyes. The castle of Eisenberg, which we are going to explore now, was built shortly after 1313 by the nobles of Hoheneck to discourage the Austrians from expanding even further northwards. They established their new lordship of Eisenberg, which centered around a mighty new castle, Eisenberg. To visualize their power towards Austria, which held the closely sighted castle of Falkenstein, Peter of Hoheneck decided to build Eisenberg in a most impressive manner. He placed it on top of a high mountain and surrounded the main castle with an exceedingly high curtain wall, which gave the impression of a huge tower. In 1390, Austria made Frederick of Freiburg constable of the castle, whose eldest son built the neighboring castle of Hohenfreiburg in 1418. Though the defenses of the castle were strengthened around 1500, the castle was conquered without any effort in 1525 in the course of the German Peasants War by local peasants who damaged the castle badly. Nevertheless, the castle was repaired and rebuilt 10 years later. The end of the castle came in September 1646, shortly before the end of the Thirty Years' War and the Austrians burned their own castles, Eisenberg, Hohenfreiberg and Falkenstein, because the Swedish army approached and they didn't want those fortresses to fall into their hands intact. To give you a better impression of how it might have looked like, let's take a look at a reconstruction of the castle. Behind the huge wall there were two residential houses leaning against it, supplying people with the necessities of life, like a bakery, a bath, toilets, a cistern and even a chapel. Around the castle wall was pulled another, smaller wall to create a so-called Zwinger. If attackers succeeded getting into the Zwinger area, they would have been trapped in a very tight area and an easy target from the higher wall behind. On the east side there was a bastion. It gave the defenders, aside with the towers, an opportunity to flank invaders. On the south was the outer bailey located. It contained the less important buildings but also a watchtower to see approaching invaders early. Looking from above you can see that there's still a lot of structures visible. Enough of talking, let's go and check it out from the inside. After passing the main gate, the first structure on the right side is the cistern to store water. On the left you can see the bakery and the bathing area.
from this view you can see really well how soldiers from the bastion were able to defend both walls from the side while intruders had no cover. The chimney-like structure in front of us is a mert toilet, so basically a medieval drainage system. There is three of them distributed around the castle. The remains of a tower.
before we are leaving, let's head to the watchtower and enjoy the beautiful view over the landscape. This is Hohen Freiberg, where we will go next. Thank you for watching my video until the very end. If you should have liked it, please consider subscribing and leaving me a like. In the next episode, we are heading over to Hohenfreiberg and take a closer look at it.